Hi, welcome to this talk about a Svelte form library called Svelte Forms, a new unopinionated form library for Svelte. Before we begin, I'd like to tell you a bit about myself. I'm probably well, most well known for uh, being active in the Svelte community. I run the Svelte Society Meetup here in Stockholm, so if you've been to that, you've probably seen me there. And uh, in addition to that, I run a small company called Svelte School that helps developer developers learn about all things Svelte, pretty much. Um, I'm currently working on video content, but uh, I also do text as well as workshops. So if you're interested in learning Svelte and you're in Stockholm, give me a, give me a shout. Anyway, so enough about me. Let's get started. So why would we need yet another form library? As we know, um, forms can be hard. And if you're coming from React, that's usually especially true. Um, but in Svelte, forms are easy, right? Well, yeah, usually. Um, the bind directive makes handling input values very easy in Svelte. In fact, I would probably go as far as claiming you probably don't need a form library most of the time. Um, another great feature of Svelte it, that's not as well, well known as the uh, use directive, also known as actions, it makes uh, handling DOM related stuff a uh, breeze and can really improve the developer uh, experience quite a lot. So these things in combination with stores will, in a majority of cases, uh, really be all that you need. However, uh, forms can be very hard. Um, for example, you might need to handle state and sync that state with some other entity. Um, and this is all well and good if you have only one or two uh, inputs. But ha what happens if you have a form that contains a number of different inputs, uh, some selects, uh, other elements that you need to keep uh, track of? Like it quickly gets quite hairy. And what about validation? What if you need to check to make sure that all your these inputs are valid? And what if they depend on each other? Like, how do you do that? At first, uh, it might look easy, but as soon as you dive into more complex validation, it can get quite hard. And I think this goes hand in hand as well with error messages. Um, how, how do you deal with them? Where do you put them? Um, and I'm sure there are a lot of other things that you can put in here as well that make forms very hard. These are just some of the things. So uh, last year, I decided I wanted to make a form library for Svelte School. Um, I set off just trying to, to make something that worked for my use case, and uh, it worked well. I didn't have any problems. I mean, it's, it's not that hard to make a one-off form that fits your site's look and feel. Um, I quickly realized, however, that I wanted to use it for other projects as well. And it was hard to get it to fit into these projects since the requirements were often quite different. So let's take a take a look at this uh, library that I built. It's called uh, Svelte Easy Forms. Um, and the first problem I realized is that it tries to do too much in a bad way. Uh, it combines styling with actual form logic. And so it is unfortunately a bit uh, too complex in my opinion. Um, having the styling be part of the library might make sense if you're building something that you're going to use across uh, like a brand of different products. But as a general purpose solution, I think styling should be as decoupled as possible from the business logic of like a form library. Um, each use case is different, right? All right, so let's see how it looks. So you can imagine this being like the styling is built in, the buttons are built in, everything is built in. So for example, hiding the labels could be hard, changing the button colors and so on and so on. You'd need to create like props for everything. I'm going to show you how it looks on the Svelte REPL. And so my idea was to just take an array of inputs pretty much and just pass it into 
to a form, compo form component like this. And I mean, it works. It's just that it can get, it, it feels kind of like magic. You don't really know what's going on. And uh, it's hard to use custom components, for example. You would have to, to create a whole, whole new kind of logic just for those. But anyway, uh, this is how it looks. Let's continue. So we need more power. Um, more customizability, uh, more tools, uh, easier integration. Um, so I started thinking about what a dream scenario would be. How would my perfect forum library look like? And one important thing would be that it shouldn't have any opinions, really. It shouldn't care about styles. It shouldn't care about validation. Uh, you want... Uh, uh, sorry, uh, it shouldn't care what validation you want to use or about what input elements you want to use. So it should have uh, a batteries included kind of approach. Um, everything or most of the things that you need should be included. Of course, uh, that doesn't mean that it should be a bloated mess. Um, if it's not needed, it shouldn't be included. So the... Uh, Defaults that you get should be sane and uh, easy to work with. But as soon as you want more flexibility, you should be able to eject and customize it to your heart's content, pretty much. And lastly, I wanted a toolbox filled with goodies. Candy that I can use to just boost, my function boost the functionality of my forms in a very easy way. And so, enter Svelte Forms. Um, I know the name is uh, a bit generic, and there are probably like five different packages already with this name, but um, this is what I decided to go with, for now at least. And so the basics. Uh, all right, so so at a bird's eye, bird's eye view, uh, what is it, and what does it try to achieve? We'll take a look at three different parts, the no styling part, the bring your own components part, as well as the enhancement part. Let's start with the no styling. Um, as we already talked about, handling styles can make things very complex. Um, Svelte Forms, by default, doesn't care at all about your styles. And since every form is different, we give the choice back to the user, pretty much. Yeah. Secondly, uh, due to the nature of how the library is built, uh, we can handle any inputs that, are, that adheres to a basic set of requirements. It pretty much needs a name, basically. So as long as this is true, um, any component can be used and Svelte Forms will automatically handle the values for you. So this means that if you're using something like a UI library, uh, such as Material Design, Bulma, or uh, Tailwind UI, they should all be working out of the box. Lastly, there's the question of the enhancements, um, or as I called them before, a toolbox of goodies. Um, that you can use to enhance your forms and inputs. So here we have two examples. An action that lets you select your text when you click the input, and an action that validates whatever you put in it. In this case, uh, an email. All right, and uh, another one that's quite fun. Um, this one makes sure that make sure that the text area element resizes to fit what you write. And in this case, we're uh, parsing some markdown as well. All right, a demo. So this is pretty much how it looks when you want to use it. You import the form, and you use it as any other component. You bind to the values attribute on the form. And then you just pretty much stick your inputs inside of, uh, of this uh, form as a slot. And uh, the, the library will handle the, uh, the serialization of the values and things like that automatically. And so we can, we can do a demo here. We can enter text. And you'll see that below, it updated, updates instantly. Uh, we can 
these checkboxes like this. We can use a select. And uh, we also have two-way binding, of course. So if you want to change something programmatically, you should be able to easily do that. So this button pretty much just changes the name, like so. Very easy and very nice. And also, because it doesn't care about the styling, you can, you can just style these however you want. Very, very nice. All right, so the internals then, well, what happens inside? Um, we just looked at how we used it, so let's, let's take a look inside. And uh, the library is actually almost entirely built using actions. Uh, you could actually, if you wanted to, uh, just import the action that is used on the form component that you import in order to build your own custom form. Um, component. Um, and in order to get the values from the form, we uh, serialize the values inside of it using a function that just walks through all of the form children and sets the values and then sends it up to the parent. So here I want to give a shout out to Luke Edwards, uh, Luke Ed on GitHub for his uh, neat little library called For Me. Uh, and I pretty much uh, use the serialize function found in that library to uh, do most of the work here for serializing. And uh, to handle the two-way binding, uh, we need to deserialize the values and uh, update all the form inputs so, so that they show the correct values. And much like the serialize function, we just loop through the children and uh, update the values. All right, let's see. And so I quickly just want to show you the, the source code for, for the form component. And as you can see, it's uh, it's not big. So you would import this action pretty much if you wanted to build your own instead of using this. And then you would listen to the update um, event. So what does the get values uh, action look like? Pretty much just takes the node goes through the inputs and uh, serializes and deserializes it depending on what happens. So if you update the values, it deserializes it and, update it and updates the values inside of the inputs. And yeah, and here's a uh, select text on focus action that is not done yet, but it will be soon. All right, so some closing remarks. Um, what's in store for the future? Um, so I want to add more utility actions, and I want to improve the developer experience even more. Um, I want to make sure that as many components as possible are um, supported. Uh, I already think it's pretty good, um, but it can always get better. And so in the next major version, my goal for this is to be the library for you to use when building forms and inputs. Um, and that means having functionality that helps you build inputs as well as forms. So I want you to be able to use this to enhance inputs easily and whenever you build your own custom input components pretty much. And hopefully I can achieve that at some point. All right, uh, that's all for me. Thank you very much.